Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So in my last video on the Burke Mill, the introduction, I talked about what it was and, and uh, uh, mentioned um, you know one of my subscribers had given me this mill and also talked about this gib here a little bit. And it's a, we're calling it a gib, uh, sort of like a maybe a gib or, or a clamp combination. And I want to bring you in a little closer to talk about it and then we're going to go to the bench and take some measurements. But it uh, did spur a lot of conversation. I got some excellent feedback from people like uh, uh, Chirpy from Chirpy's Tinkering, uh, Patty, uh, Art Eckstein, uh, Richard from Making Something From Nothing, uh, Chris Anderson from um, Old Iron Shops or whatever it's called. I can't ever remember the name of his channel. And uh, Walt from Southern Engineering and lots and lots and lots of people. So it it's, uh, seems like it's going to be uh, something that a few people want to see. So, in discussing uh, this uh, kind of unusual gib uh, with s some of the, some of these folks, uh, we've decided to do a bit of a collaboration uh, video. I uh, obviously cannot make a gib without a milling machine or, or a piece of machinery to make it. Um, I had uh, uh, Chirpy from Chirpy's Tinkering says, "Hey, uh, if you can uh, supply the materials, I'll I'll make you a, a gib for your machine." And uh, Richard says, well, hey, I've got some cast iron that I'll kick over that way. He says, I'll prep it up and, and uh, we'll drop ship it and go from there. So we have a little bit of a collaboration and, and that's what this video is about. And I need to get some measurements, uh, <laughs> measurements, <right? laughs> I need to get some measurements and uh, we're going to talk about uh, these gibs a little bit. And I also want to show you what I think is the good gib and the way it's set up and uh, go from there. So uh, let's bring the closer. Uh, let's bring the camera in just a little bit closer, and uh, let's talk about this here. And then we're going to go to the bench and take some measurements. Okay, so we're at the side of the machine. Uh, the gib for the knee is here. The gib for the saddle goes here. And of course, so we pulled this out, and uh, there's two separate angles. And one of the things that uh, I noticed when I did put this up in here is that even when I clamp it, it doesn't clamp tight enough to. Um, capture the uh, the uh, saddle so now I don't know if that's because I got this backwards or or what but it looks like I may have had that backwards let's see here I see and that doesn't that doesn't fit right so um, I'm gonna try to take some angle measurements and that sort of thing now I did have a, a man um, email me that has one of these machines and I was asking about uh, table locks, right? So on the cross slide where the give here is, you have three give screws and then there's a hole here for a lock so you can lock the X travel. I didn't notice anything or don't see anything on these, but I was told that there should be a bolt that comes up here that you tighten that would lock it. And he said, suggested that I look underneath the casting. So when I pull this casting off, what I see is just these two studs coming out, right? And then I see there's a, a little bite mark from looks like a set screw or something. So I thought maybe the gib had a, um, a bolt or something that went through that locked it. But then I got thinking about that. If the saddle is in this position right here and the gib is bolted in and I got another bolt pushing up and the gib is threaded in it, so it's pulling the gib down. It actually, instead of, uh, it, it, that works backwards, that's not right. It, it, whatever it is needs to push the gib up, okay? So, but I did notice that there's a set screw mark here, so I was a little curious about that. So, I uh, pulled off the uh, knee gib, and let's take a little look at that. Hopefully I can do that without messing anything up here. So when I pull this give out, I notice that there are two threaded holes here and I look on the back side, there's two set screws. So I really think what that is, is that sets the adjustment of the gib and then the, the bolts lock the gib in place. So uh, it's still very unclear how you would lock the knee uh, or the uh, saddle on this machine. Uh, but one thing that uh, I did notice, or at least I think that I noticed, is, I don't know if this will fit up here, but 
the angle is that angle looks correct more so than this angle here because this angle the shallow angle when I put it on the you know it's, I don't know it just seems a little cattywampus or tilted that's not those bolts aren't going straight through so the angles aren't correct where I think these are okay so I think the Gibbs um, should be made like this so when I send this out to a chirpy I'm actually going to send both of these Gibbs so that he can compare the two angles there's a probably a 60 degree angle we're going to try to measure that and a, a, a smaller angle here but if you look I don't know if you can see um, there's a flat right here so this looks like this is shifted this way instead of being um, you know the, the the bolts as they would come through instead of coming through straight they're coming through at an angle and you see how these are all wallowed out and kind of crazy looking so we're gonna go over to the bench and set up the camera and uh, let's take some measurements um, the first one obviously we want is the width of the gib will need to be the width of the um, saddle so let's get a measurement on here all right okay so I'm at uh, four inches three seventy two four inches three seventy two or Let's say four inches three seventy five. That'd be four inches and three eighths. That's probably the uh, length that it should be. So I'll mark that down. Four point three seven five. And uh, so now we're going to go over to the bench and see if we can figure out something about these angles. Okay, so I'm over at the bench and I have the gib that was in the uh, knee, and then I have this destroyed gib that was in the um, uh, saddle. Now the problem with uh, measuring this is that uh, you know I have this weld sticking up here from the bottom so I can't really measure from the bottom. I can measure from the top surface and the, the, the shallower side um, is pretty clear and I can measure that but there's a ridge that runs all down through here so I'm not going to be able to really measure off of this side. But let's measure this one here and then we'll kind of do some comparisons on this one to make sure that uh, the gib is cut at the same angle so let's start with uh, I'm gonna my reference on this will, will be the wide flat base so let's uh, measure we'll start here and uh, we're just kind of getting estimates because I think Chirpy said just send the um, uh, the gib and he's gonna do from that okay so when I align that up here on my protractor I see that's 60 degrees and that's what I would expect on a normal uh, dovetail alright so let's flip this around and get the other side so this the steeper angle as I bring it up here alright hopefully you guys can see that maybe not um, we see that's 80 degrees so we got a 60 degree and an 80 degree taper there and if we measure it from the other side, we should have, um, I think, um, you know, 10 and 30 degrees, respectively. So let's, um, let's measure this one here on the long one, on the uh, shallower angle. And just getting a ballpark here. That looks like that's about it. So that puts me at uh, 110, roughly. So that's, uh, is that right? So from 90, so that's so 10, 20, it's almost 30, 30 degrees. So that's 30 and 60. So that's, that's probably right. I uh, probably don't have, let me get this. A little closer okay yeah so I'm at uh, I'm at 110 there 115 almost 
So that would that would probably be the 30. And like I said, I can't really measure over here, but if I'm close, if I get close, but I'm hitting a ridge, I'm at uh, I'm at uh, oh man, I tell you what, it's that's hard to. Okay, I'm at 100 degrees there, so that's 10 off of of uh, or 80 degrees and you know I'm real close to 80 degrees so that that's the same angle let's measure these again here make sure we got this right so coming off uh, well let's come off the top and we'll start with this one and all right a protractor reads 120 so we know that's a we know that's a 60 degree 30 60 degree angle there and off over on this side That's reading 80 degrees or, or 100, so it's it's you know 10 degrees off of vertical there. So this one, it's uh, now see this one's reading this one's reading uh, 105, and it's reading. Hundred and ten. So these angles don't appear to be the same. Um, so I think what we need to do is uh, measure. I'm still going to send both of these to Chirpy because they they look pretty doggone. This one actually looks steeper. So I think this is a homemade one, and I think this is the angle that it's supposed to be at. So what I might do, uh, I'll contact Chirpy and see if he wants me to send the slide and. Uh, and both Gibbs and go from there or however he wants to do it. So let me uh, let me grab the slide real quick and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I have the saddle over here. A while ago, I uh, measured these. Uh, this measured uh, 80 degrees, this measured 60 degrees. This one here is sort of close to both but not quite right. And um, so I think what I wanna do is verify um, the 80 degree angle if I can uh, off of this side of the uh, of the carriage casting, and then of course this side, you know, we know is we know that's 60 degrees. So, so let me uh, take the protractor here, and I want to put a flashlight behind it, and I'm going to bring this up, and till I see no light. So hopefully, uh, my head's not in the way. Bring that up there. That looks good, about right there and I see that I'm on 80 degrees. So that is, it is in fact 80 degrees. So, um, so I have a little bit of a dilemma. Uh, this, the knee gib, the hole spacings from the side are different than what they need to be here on the, uh, on the uh, saddle. And the, you can't take any measurements off that because, well, that's, that's junk and that's a piece of steel this is a piece of cast iron, so somebody made this. I'm convinced of it. Uh, so what I'll need to do, and I'll do it off camera because I will take several measurements. These are uh, 5, 16, 18 studs. Um, I will measure the width and get the center distance. And then I will measure and from, uh, try to measure from the top uh, down to the uh, dovetail if I can. Um, we're going to call it a dovetail even though it's uh, uh, 80 degrees and try to find the center distance here uh, as to where to place the the holes in the new gib and also uh, I'll note that there is a set screw uh, dumple right here in the middle so I'm sure that this gib that goes here works just like the gib that was on the uh, knee so you got a couple set screws that actually you know set the set the, the 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 gib and then it's locked down with some nuts so that it can't move so i, I think that's how it uh, how that's intended to work uh, although i'm still up in the air and confused why i have no or there's no uh, locks uh, for the the y or the or the z axis so that's what i'm going to do with that and uh, i'll send both of these pieces to uh, chirpy uh, so I think maybe he can indicate off of this one here to cut the new one um, as far as the angles go. Um, I'll send this one here so that he can, sorry about my phone, 
so that he can, uh, you know, sort of see what, what happened here and maybe he can sort of figure out or maybe use it as a reference. But when we put this in, I noticed that the, uh, the, the gib uh, doesn't sit square. Okay, so you can see that it's actually leaned over that way. So this, this part here is bottomed out. This part here is up in the uh, air, probably oh, a 32nd of an inch or maybe a little bit more. So there's no way that that could actually lock and work uh, correctly. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some more measurements. I'm going to send the information to uh, Chirpy. I'm going to ask Chirpy if uh, he wants me to go ahead and send the uh, slide to and, uh, and see about getting this made up. So look, I want to thank uh, Richard for making something from nothing, for supplying the cast iron to make this new uh, uh, gib. And uh, a big, huge, and thanks uh, to uh, Chirpy for... Uh, willing to take on the job of, uh, of machining a new gib for this thing. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, and uh, if look, if this uh, these kind of videos are helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. And um, uh, as far as future videos on, on this, I think coming next, uh, we're going to have to build some sort of um, bench to mount the, uh, uh, the milling machine on. Um, even if it's only a temporary bench, I got to have something much more sturdy than what I'm using right now. Um, and uh, of course, got to got to do a tear down and then and then etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But we'll cover those as we go. So again, uh, thanks for watching and have a blessed day. Okay, so I have the saddle over here. <coughs> Just ate a bug. <coughs> <coughs> <coughs>